In fact, she filed for divorce in 2015. Isn't that true? I don't remember the exact date. Do you recall that prior to August 5th of 2016, approximately a month earlier, you were compelled by the Honorable Charles Francis in that very divorce case to begin providing financial records? Correct. And up until Judge Francis had entered that order, you had delayed and tried to block Ms. Williams from going forward with her divorce of you. Mm. I didn't get the paperwork done in time. But on the morning of August 5th, 2016, you crawled in the back of Ms. Williams' vehicle at about 2 or 3 a.m.? Yes, sir. Because that's when it's the darkest? Right. And you waited for her? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. You had a backpack with you? Yes, sir. You had a loaded handgun? Yes, sir. You had a tarp? No, sir. You didn't have a tarp? Did not. Did you have a blanket? I had a sheet. A sheet. Is that the sheet you were going to use to wrap Ms. Williams' body in after you killed her? No, absolutely not. You had bottles containing fluids? Water, yes, sir. One water bottle to spray the outside of her car so she couldn't see the inside of the car where I was hiding. And you had some kind of tool with you? A tool. She thought I had a tool. It was actually a clip, I believe, to the uh, pistol. So it was more bullets for the pistol? No, it was an empty clip. This was an armed kidnapping that you'd planned for over a month? I thought about it for a month. You're very upset with Ms. Williams, weren't you? I was angry. You were angry because she was going forward with the divorce? I was angry for a lot of reasons besides that. She hadn't been talking to you in the week prior, had she? Um, no. What were you going to get her to do after, well, let me back up. About 7 a.m., Ms. Williams got in her vehicle to go to work? Right. So at about that point in time, you'd been sitting in the back of her car for up to five hours? Right. You had a bottle of water that you had, were going to use to spray to cover the window so she couldn't see you? I did do that, right. And then as she got in her vehicle to go to work, you crawled up over the back seat and shoved a gun into her ribs, didn't you? Um, I didn't shove a gun into her ribs. I didn't pull the gun out until later, and I had it at her side for 10 seconds top. She didn't even know the gun was there until I told her later what it was. You had a gun? I had a gun. You didn't have a bouquet of flowers? Correct. You had a gun? A loaded mm -hmm. handgun? Right. She screamed, didn't she? Screamed? Yeah. When she found out that you had crawled over the back seat of her vehicle in the early morning hours of August 5th, 2016, she screamed, didn't she? She was on the phone, and... I took the phone and hung the phone up. Um, we yelled at each other. She stopped the car in the middle of the road. I was worried a car was going to hit us from behind. So I yelled at her to drive, drive. Um, she, I don't remember her screaming, no, sir. Um, but obviously she was alarmed, yes. Yeah, because you had been hiding in the back of her vehicle. You crawled over a couple rows of seats, and you had something which telling us now you didn't tell her it was a gun until later. Yes, sir. Mr. Wade, we're not going to just reiterate yes, this Your money. If you have a new question, please ask. At some point, she eventually was able to talk you down? At some point, I calmed down and realized how ridiculous this whole situation was. It was a little more than ridiculous. It was criminal, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And at some point on August 5th, 2016, to the best of your knowledge, Ms. Williams made contact with law enforcement, and you were arrested that day. Yes, sir. That is the last day that you have been a free man in the state of Florida, isn't it? Correct. After you were arrested, there was an opportunity for you to have hearings related to a bond. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. Do you recall you were not granted a bond? Yes, sir. Do you recall if you're aware that Ms. Williams vigorously opposed you receiving any kind of bond? At those hearings, yes, correct. Earlier she questioned whether I should have she even should have gone to the police. 
But after August 5th of 2016, up until the time you were sentenced, you were in jail and you were not getting out of jail. And Ms. Williams had made her position clear that she wanted you to be to remain incarcerated. After she changed her position, yes. After she got interviewed by FDLE and realized that she had opened up a can of worms with the murder that we committed together, you're right. She changed her position and started asking for life in prison for me. But the penalty for the armed kidnapping is life in prison, isn't it? Yes, sir. And as you testified earlier concerning your agreement with the state, based on that proper agreement, the state wasn't going to ask for that life in prison, were they? I'm sorry. Can you ask that again? You had just indicated that Ms. Williams had, was seeking life in prison, correct? Right. But life in prison is the possible punishment for the crimes to which you pled. Correct. And you made a deal with the government not to get that life sentence. Um, your term made a deal. It was a proffer agreement. Um, and yes, it restricted them from asking for life, but they subsequently asked for 45 years. I don't call that a great deal. Well, what were you ultimately sentenced to? What was I ultimately sentenced to? How long will you be in prison? 20 years. Is your tentative release date 2036? I don't know exactly. You don't know when you are likely to get out of prison for the kidnapping of Denise Williams? I had 20 years to whenever I was arrested. Um, I don't have a calendar in front of me. And it is your understanding and belief that you will one day walk out of the Florida prison system? If I survive it. Let's go back to the very beginning of your involvement with Denise Williams. You've known each other since you were both very young, haven't you? Preschool. And that would be at Parkway Baptist Church as toddlers? Yes, sir. And then you and Ms. Williams went on to Holy Comforter together? Middle school. And after you went to Holy Comforter, you and Ms. Williams attended North Florida Christian, correct? High school. Class of 1988? Yes, sir. And that's the same high school you went to with Mike Williams and with Kathy Aldridge, who later became your wife? Yes, sir. When you were in high school, you dated Kathy Aldridge? Yes, sir. And Denise dated Mike? Correct. And it was at that point in time when you were in high school and after that you two as couples and the four of you as individual friends would do things together, correct? It primarily started, um, I guess, later in college. And after college, you all four remained very close friends, correct? Yes. You went on trips together? Yes. Went to local nightclubs together? Yes. Restaurants? Yes, sir. Went to each other's houses? Yes, sir. You had indicated that you started an intense affair, I believe your testimony was, sometime on October 13, 1997 at Floyd's Music Store. Is that your testimony? Yes, sir. And that relationship turned into something where you were calling Miss Williams up to 12 times a day, sometimes on the phone? I'm sure there was a day where I called her 12 times a day, probably, but, I mean, we talked or saw each other routinely, regularly. During this time frame, where was Ms. Williams working? At first, she was at uh, SBA, State Board of Administration. She only had a 30-minute lunch break at the State Board, didn't she? <laughs> uh, I don't know how long her lunch break was, but she routinely uh, was late getting back from lunch. Because you previously indicated that you and Ms. Williams would have sex up to 15 times a week. you recall ever telling me that? I, I gave a range, I believe. It was 15 the top of the range? Yes, sir. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. You had indicated that the, the sex, the sex acts that took place up to 15 times a week would take place in public places, including the top of the Capitol. Yes, sir. No one ever saw you. I'm sure... People saw us, but uh, we were very good at hiding things. Denise is a very smart person. I'm probably not as smart as her, but we were pretty good at getting away with things. Well, let's talk about that. If you're very good at getting away with things and no one saw you, how is it on December 16, 2000, after you shot Mike Williams in the face, that you ran across two individuals that very day who may have been law enforcement officers? You ran across Mike Phillips at Walmart, correct? Yes, sir. And Mike Phillips is an agent with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement? Yes, sir. Then you ran across another gentleman at the end of Gardner Road who you believed was a wildlife officer. Right. So on the day that you shoot your best friend in the face, you come across 
two people just at random, both of whom may be in law enforcement. I also pulled up at a stoplight next to or across from a state patrol officer, but I didn't have any control over any of those occurrences. Thank you. So you had a third con potential contact with law enforcement on that day. Yes, sir. But in this three-year affair that you said included sex up to 15 times a week, you have no recollection of anyone ever discovering that. Three-year affair? Well, 1997 to 2000. 2005. Okay. Eight-year. Eight-year. Nobody ever found out. Nobody ever found out? In 2000, Wait a minute, I, think he, I think he's asking you to clarify is that the question, Mr. Well, Mr. Yeah, Lake. I would, I would, let me rephrase the question. Over the eight years you just testified to, do you know of anyone who visibly observed you in an affair with Ms. Williams? Yes, sir. Who? Randy Clutcher. Okay. Randy Clutcher, who is he? Randy owned a business in town on Tennessee Street. I was friends with him. Denise and I ran into him coming out of a strip. I, I hate to do this to you, Randy, but he was coming out of a strip club in Panama City when Denise and I were walking inside. Um, I took Denise out on a boat with a good friend of mine, Lance Walker, lied to him and told him Denise was my cousin. He came up to me later and said, that's not your cousin, bro. Um, we ran into Denise's sister at the mall one time. Um, I'm sure there's numerous times that I'm not even aware of that uh, we were seen or observed by people. Well, that's observed by people in general. I think my question was more anyone observe you having, you know, in these trysts that you indicated occurred in public places. But let me, let me follow up with what you had just said. You and Denise Williams were friends, correct? You were lifelong friends. When? From third grade at Parkway Baptist all the way up to probably when she separated from you in 2012. Right. So it's not uncommon for you to be seen out in public with someone you've known since they were three, is it? Mm. When you're married to other people and you're going into strip clubs together, I think that's a little odd. Well, the strip club trip, when was that? Which one? We went to strip club through about? regularly. The one you just talked about with Randy in Panama City, what year was that? I couldn't tell you. It was it after Mike was killed? I'm not sure. Because after Mike was killed, thanks to you, Miss Williams was a widow at that point. Thanks to me? Yeah. Killed her husband. She went married to him after you killed him. In 2000, you were working as a financial planner for your father. Jerry, disregard the comments from Mr. Way. He's here to ask questions, and you're to consider the answers to those questions, not comments by the attorney. Acknowledge, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Winchester, in 2000, you were working as a financial planner? Yes, sir. And in your role as a financial planner, you sold insurance? Yes, sir. You handled investments and money matters for your clients? Correct. Uh, did your clients include friends of yours from North Florida Christian? Yes, sir. Did they also include Denise Williams and some of her family members? Yes, sir. Have you had handled financial matters from Ms. Williams' sisters, or some of her sisters? Yes, sir. And you were Mike Williams' financial planner? I was one. Uh, because he had sought advice from other individuals that you became aware of. He had a large account at Merrill Lynch, and he had a relationship with a man that sold him the Cotton States policy. Now, you previously testified, I just want to confirm this, you previously testified that Denise Williams didn't want to be a divorcee. Right. Except when it came to you. Is that fair to say? <coughs> sure. You testified, or you've indicated that part of the reason why you killed Mike Williams is because you wanted to be with Denise Williams. You wanted to be with her romantically. Yes, sir. But as it came to pass after you murdered Mike Williams, you did not, in fact, come to be with Miss Williams exclusively. You were still married to Kathy Thomas, weren't you? I was still married to her when the murder occurred, yes, sir. In fact, you didn't get divorced until 2003. Right. And then around the same time frame, Miss Williams was involved in a romantic relationship with Charles Bunker. Okay. 
Well, Charles Bunker, you testified yesterday you were aware that Ms. Williams and Mr. Bunker went to Atlanta. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. We talked about it yesterday. Okay. And you recall that that made you angry? Yes, sir. I felt very betrayed by that. Because Mr. Bunker and Ms. Williams were in a physical, intimate relationship, weren't they? At the same time, she was in a physical, intimate relationship with me, right? right. So you weren't with her exclusively, and she wasn't with you exclusively, according to your testimony. We were supposed to be together exclusively, but yes, I cheated on her and she cheated on me, so we were equal cheaters. Actually, she was first. I forgot. The, the trip you went on with Mike where you drove several hours, that was to Arkansas? 20 hours, yes, sir. And that was the trip where Mike indicated you he was unhappy with his marriage? Yes, sir. And he wanted to move out west? That was one thing that he brought up. And how long was it before you murdered Mike did this hunting trip occur? It was in November. So it was about a month before you killed him? Yes, sir. And you didn't just tell him to go ahead and file for divorce and move out west? I should have. Because according to your testimony, a month before you killed Mike Williams, he's giving you an indication that he's frustrated in his marriage and he wants to perhaps move away. Isn't no, that he wasn't saying alone. He was talking about all of them. He was unhappy in his marriage, and so he was going to take his family and move out west. Okay. But you didn't encourage him to do that and stay to kill him. That's what we did, yes. Well, that's what we did. When you shot Mike Williams at Lake Seminole with the 12-gauge shotgun, was Denise Williams standing there with you? No, she wasn't. She was in my head behind me. She was in your head? Mm-hmm. Is it fair to say that over the years you've been obsessed with Denise Williams? Obsessed. Um, Denise and I were best friends. We were Bonnie and Clyde. We were partners in crime. Um, were we obsessed with each other? I'm not asking if she was obsessed with you. He's answering your question. I think Mr. White let him finish. Um, you, you, could, you could say that. I won't argue with you on that. Prior to the hunting trip to Lake Seminole on December 16th, 2000, uh, you talked with Mike every day by phone? I mean, maybe not every single day, but very regularly, yes, sir. You previously indicated that as it relates to this case and investigation, you were worried about phone records, but it seems to me around 2000, you spent a lot of time on the phone. Yes. You spent a lot of time on the phone with Denise. Yes. You spent a lot of time on the phone with Mike. Right. We were worried about it being around the murder. You told Mike that you were going to take him hunting to a super secret place. I don't know exactly what words I used, but that's the way that I framed it, was that it was a special spot that we needed to use waiters to get into. But in fact, you've hunted out of Lake Seminole before, haven't you? Yes, sir. And Mike Williams has hunted out of Lake Seminole before? Yes, sir. And you and Mike have both hunted together at Lake Seminole before? Yes, sir. There's nothing really secret about going to Lake Seminole, is there? It's a 20,000-acre lake. There's plenty of spots that people don't know about. And when you find a spot that has a lot of ducks, then you refer to it as a honey hole or a secret spot or, you know, it's like fishing. Did you tell Mike where this honey hole was, where the secret spot was in the lake? No. You got to Lake Seminole with Mike about 3.30 or 4.30 a.m.? I don't know if it was that early. I think we met between 3.30 and 4.30, but it was earlier than it would have normally been because I was trying to get back in time to meet my father-in-law. And, of course, as you're aware, uh, the area around Lake Seminole where you put in, in Sneeds, is in the central time zone, correct? Yes, sir. So if it was 4.30 in the morning here, it would be 3.30 local time at Lake Seminole. I, I didn't care about what time it was over there. So you get him out of the boat. You rock the boat, or did you push him out? When I, I, when I pushed him out of the boat. Did you stand up, or did you just rock the boat? He stood up. What did you do then? I pushed him out of the boat. Did you stand up to push him, or did you push him when you were sitting down? No, I was sitting in, in the seat in the back. 
falls on the water. Water is it dark out? Yes, sir. Water is black. Right. No, no light. Um, we had lights on the boat, um, but yes, it was dark. How far away from the boat was he after you pushed him in? After I pushed him in, how far from the boat was he? How far did he get from the boat? After he went in the water, I motored away from him just a little bit because I was worried he would try to get back into the boat. Um, and then I kind of slowly circled around out of range uh, where he was at. And it was during this time that he swam to the stump? Right. So now Mr. Williams is holding on to the stump. When you see him, how do you see him? How are you able to tell that he's holding on to the stump? Because I can see him. Did you see him off of the light that you had or off of the boat light? I believe I had a headlamp on. It's a light you wear on your head. How far did, how close did you get to Mike when you saw him holding on to that stump? At what point? Let's use the point when you shot him in the face. When that happened, um, he was in front of me to the right, and I took the boat to the left of him and approached him. And when I got to whatever, I guess I felt like I needed to, that I needed to do that before he could grab onto the boat, that's when I shot him. How close were you? Um, the boat was moving, um, so I'm guessing, you know, you asked me this before, and I think I said between 3 and 12 feet or something like that, but uh, as I've thought about it since then, I've thought about the fact that the boat was moving towards him, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to say 3 feet. Okay. And this is because you've had an opportunity since we last talked to think about your testimony and now it's closer to three feet instead of what you previously told me. What did I previously tell you? Three to twelve feet. So three feet, yes sir. So now it's definitely, so you're up close to him, three feet. You can see his face at three feet, can't you? I can see the outline of him, yes. Three feet is a very short distance. Yes sir. What's he saying to you? He was yelling. You said yesterday that you had to load your shotgun. Did you have to put a, a round in the chamber? Yes, sir. What kind of gun did you have? What, name brand? No, just pump, over, under. Pump. So that would require you to manually pump a round into the chamber. It makes a noise, doesn't it? Yes, sir. It's a distinctive noise, isn't it? Yes, sir. What did Mike Williams do when he heard you put a round in the shotgun? Um, he didn't. He didn't say anything about that. I don't. I don't know that he heard me or not. Well, you were almost three feet to him. That's not when I loaded the gun. Well, how far away were you when you loaded the gun? It was while I was circling him. So you're I'm circling going. him while he's in this stump field. Yes, sir. You're taking care to avoid the stumps around him. Yes, sir. You're trying to navigate your boat through a stump field to find your friend in pitch black holding onto a stump. I wasn't navigating, trying to find him. He was from me to you, and I was circling around him. It's from me to you, and you're circling. Did you go behind him, or did you just circle around in front of him? A circle goes completely around. So you would go around from his front to his back and back around to his front? I was going around in a continuous circle. And he's yelling at you? He's yelling for help. But then you closed distance in that boat after you had loaded around into the chamber of that shotgun, correct? Yes, sir. You get to about three feet away from him. You see him. Do you have to aim the gun? Yes, sir. And you aimed it at him? Yes, sir. You pulled the trigger? Yes, sir. He was holding on to that stump, wasn't he? Yes, sir. And he wasn't? Right. How long did it take you to circle back around and pull his now lifeless body out of the water? I circled immediately around. How did you know where to grab it? It's pitch black, the water's dark. Because I knew where the stump was. It was 
messy, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Did you look to see if there was any blood or any other matter on the stump after you shot him? No, sir. Dragged his lifeless body back to the shore, ran down and got your truck, did you? Yes, sir. Did you just leave his body just laying there on the shore? Um, I believe I left it in, in the water. Did you pull it up so it wouldn't drift off, wouldn't sink? No, it was very shallow there on the shore, and I didn't want anybody to see it while I was gone. Did you look to see if there was any blood or any results of what you had done there as the body just laid? No, I didn't want to see any of it. You didn't look around to see if there was anything, any blood? He was in the water. At some point in time, you loaded him in the back of your vehicle on an incline? At the edge of the water, yes, sir. You sped back to Tallahassee, didn't you? Yes, sir. Your best friend in the back of the Suburban with nothing covering his body? Nothing covering it? You didn't put anything over his body, did you? There was a large dog crate in the back of my truck, a plastic dog crate. And I put the top half of his body into the dog crate because I knew he would be bleeding and I didn't want to get blood everywhere if possible. Um, and that's where he was. Did you, did you shove your best friend's body into the dog crate while you were late seven, or did you stop somewhere along the line and make that happen? That happened at the lake. Denise Williams had no idea that you shot her husband in the face with a shotgun, did you? Correct. She didn't learn or would not have been able to learn that you shot her husband in the face with a shotgun until after your proffer and testimony became public. Um, actually, I tried to tell her about it one day, and she did not want to know the details. She told me that she assumed that obviously when his body was never found, uh, that what we had planned did not happen, and that it never made sense to her that I was able to get to the shoreline, but he wasn't, but that it was okay, and we were forgiven, and... We were like David and Bathsheba, and God was going to forgive us, and we didn't have to tell anybody about it, uh, as long as as long as we asked forgiveness from God, it was okay for us not to confess it to anybody else. David looked down from palace to Bathsheba, didn't he? Yes, sir. So you killed Uriah. Yes, sir. You coveted Denise the same way that the good King David coveted Bathsheba. Yes, sir. That didn't end well for them, did it? No. But to be clear, you never told Denise Williams that you shot her husband. She didn't let me tell her that, no. And I didn't want to tell her that. You came back to Tallahassee, you crawled in bed with your wife? Yes, sir. Was your left arm still soaking wet from where you had reached into the water to pull my lifeless body out? I, I don't remember. I, I doubt it. I don't know. You crawled in bed. How long were you in bed with your wife before you decided to get up and go to Walmart? Very briefly. Long enough for me to try to get her to realize that I had overslept and make the phone call to my father-in-law and I wanted to get out of there as quick as I could before she woke up and started going about the house. And it was at that point that you went to Walmart to get a tarp and a shovel? I got a tarp, a shovel, and weights. And then you took Mike to Car Lake? Yes, sir. Took him out of the dog carrier that you left his body in? Yes, sir. You buried him? Yes, sir. You then had to go back to your parents' house, wash the blood out of the back of the truck, didn't you? Yes, sir. 
Were your parents home? I don't remember. I, I, if they were, I was not looking for them. I did not want to run into anybody. You indicated earlier that at some point in time your father, Marcus Winchester, called you and wanted you to go to the Lake Seminole with him. Later that evening. Did your father call you from his house or was he already on the way? I don't know where he was. Did you meet up with him and ride together? I believe we did. Where did you meet up and ride together from? I don't remember. Could it have been your father's house? Could have been. When you got to Lake Seminole that evening, did you see Scott Dungey? I don't remember if Scott was there that evening or not. I remember Denise's dad was there. I want to say uh, Mr. Martin was there. Um, I don't remember who else was there. How many times did you see Scott Dungey at Lake Seminole during the time they were searching for Mike as a missing person? Scott was probably there every day. How many times do you think you saw him? 30 to, uh, I don't know, probably 30 times. And you and Scott Dungey went to North Florida Christian together? He went to school with all of us, yes, sir. So he knew who you were? Yes, sir. And you knew who he was? Yes, sir. You saw him about 30 times? <coughs> Probably, yes, sir. After you killed Mike, you and your father's agency were the ones that started initiating the process to collect insurance, correct? I was not in a hurry for that process to start. I thought it would look suspicious and kind of wanted things to drag out. It was really my dad that uh, instigated and kind of uh, started that process. Dealt directly with the insurance companies? I'm sorry? He dealt directly with the insurance companies? Yes, sir. You indicated earlier that you believed it was your father who put Ms. Williams in contact with attorney Kirk Hunter. Yes, sir. And all around this time, you're still married to Kathy, aren't you? Yes, sir. In fact, up until September of 2001, you and Kathy were living in the same house, correct? That sounds about right. I believe you also. I didn't say anything. I'm sorry, dude. Was there something? I don't know. I heard something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. bad hearing. I apologize, bro. Around this time, according to your previous testimony, you indicated that you were also having a relationship with Angela Stafford sometime in 2001. I wouldn't term it a relationship. I mean, we had a few incidences where we met up, hooked up, met up. But no, I wouldn't call it a relationship. Were these hooks up, hookups of an intimate nature? A few of them were. So you weren't together with Denise. You were still married to Kathy, and you're also seeing Angel. Are you asking when that happened? Well, at least in this time frame I just spoke about, around 2001, is that a fair statement? I think uh, Angela was after Kathy and I were separated. I wasn't going out partying uh, with Denise and Angela leaving my wife at the house, so I think we were separated at that point. You finally got divorced from Kathy on March 26, 2003. You recall that, that final hearing? Yes, sir. Happened right here in this courthouse? Yes, sir. And that was the time where you tried to stop her from going through with the divorce. You recall that? When? At that very hearing on March 26th. I tried to stop her. You sat in the pew one for the seat one row behind her and you cried. Remember that? I cried, yes, sir. I don't know that that's trying to stop her, but yes, I cried. I was not happy. I was upset about it. You told her you didn't want to go through with the divorce that day, didn't you? I don't remember telling her that, no, sir. You would just be sitting there crying. You wanted to get back with Kathy Thomas after that divorce was finalized in 2003, didn't you? I didn't want to get back with Kathy until after Denise and I uh, had the incidences with Chuck Bunker, and I was just done with all of it, and I went to church, like I said yesterday, kind of had a spiritual reawakening and then over the next maybe six months or so became convinced that 
I needed to try to get back with Kathy. It wasn't something that I really wanted to do. It was something that I felt like I should do, that it was the right thing to do. That spiritual reawakening and the right thing to do, that also may cover confessing one's sins, wouldn't it? Yes, sir, it should. You didn't confess the sin of murder to anyone, did you? No, we haven't. I have, but we haven't. We'll get to that in a little bit. Miss, at one point in time, I believe you indicated that Miss Thomas had used the term throw you under the bus as it related to Denise. Yes, sir. In fact, when you gave your first proffer to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement on October 9, 2017, didn't you use a very similar phrase, throwing under the bus? When I gave my first... First statement to law enforcement as part of the proffer. Right. Did I use that phrase? Yeah, do you recall saying, I don't want to emotionally throw her under the bus? Yes, sir. But in 2017, the bus you were being thrown under was the armed kidnapping bus. That was what you were facing. Those were the charges you were facing in October 2017, weren't they? Yes, sir. And those charges stemmed from Ms. Williams being the victim. Yes, sir. Now, you got to jail on August 5th, 2016 on the charges of armed kidnapping. You didn't straight away go to law enforcement and volunteer the details of the Mike Williams murder, did you? Absolutely not. In fact, while you were in jail awaiting the resolution of your kidnapping case, you decided you were going to take certain steps to try to frustrate the prosecution of the armed kidnapping case. Isn't that true? Yes, sir. I was desperate to do anything that I possibly could to avoid going to prison. And that included obstructing justice, didn't it? Yes, sir. That included approaching an individual named Wade Wilson and offering to have him pay money to try to influence the outcome of your kidnapping case. I don't know who approached who initially, but he and I had discussions along that, those lines, yes, sir. Was there ever any discussion about paying Wade Wilson to kill Denise Williams? Wade brought up the fact that he had been a hitman in his past. I, I think he was lying, but he did offer to uh, make Denise go away and make other witnesses in the case go away. And I said, don't ever speak to me of that again. So you were drawing the line at having witnesses eliminated. Yes, sir. You were not drawing the line at having witness testimony and other evidence fabricated. Correct. And you talked with other people about helping you fabricate evidence and develop ways to frustrate the prosecution. Isn't that true? Yes, sir. Talked to a woman named Kimberly Adams. Yes, sir. Fact, you offered her money to try to help you obstruct justice and witness tamper. No, sir. I didn't offer her money. Did she end up getting money from you or a family member? Um, I think I think she got money uh, from my dad, but that was not a quid pro pro. I can't say that, but it was not pay you to do this. So her her role in helping you obstruct justice and tamper with witnessing, she was going to do that for free. I don't believe she ever did anything. I just asked her to do things. You know, I, I don't. None of the people that I asked to help me out of my situation ended up helping me in any way. So, yeah, you didn't want to go to prison. You didn't want to pay the consequences for what you had done, did you? Just like Denise, right? Okay. One of the people that you tried to implicate in this was a Jennifer Winchester, correct? Yes, sir. Who is Jennifer Winchester? My sister. Is she your only sister? Yes, sir. After the summer of 2017 passed, did you become aware that law enforcement had learned of your arrangement with Wade Wilson? Uh, yes, sir. And at that point in time, after learning of the arrangement with Wade Wilson, that scared you even more than facing disarmed kidnapping charges because now you were tampering with witnesses. Yes, sir. Lying was just making things worse for me. And you knew you were looking at life in prison. 
I was already facing life in prison, but it's getting worse. It's getting worse. You had a very, you had a very firm judge, didn't you? Hangman Hankinson, yes, sir. I can comment on that, but you knew that you knew the things in your situation, not only from the armed kidnapping, but now with the witness tampering and obstruction of justice, it had gotten worse. Yes, sir. Lying was making things worse. So, in October of 2017, this proffer agreement is negotiated. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't remember the exact dates, but yes, there was a proffer agreement that uh, came about. Try to help yourself out of the situation that you had put yourself in with the armed kidnapping and with the obstruction of justice. You give to the state information related to where they can find the body of Mike Williams. I was asked to provide any and all information that I knew about the Mike Williams case in exchange for the things that you talked about earlier. And you got the benefits that we talked about earlier, but you got one more benefit, didn't you? You got the benefit of seeing Denise Williams arrested, locked up, and brought to trial. That's not a benefit. You got the revenge for her putting you in the same situation you wanted to put her in. No, sir. I wouldn't want to put anybody in this situation. She got herself in this situation. Well, you would put your sister in the situation of tampering with witnesses? I asked her for help, yes, sir. You would put Kim Adams in the situation of tampering with witnesses? Yes, sir. You have a history of trying to plant evidence. You put a fake hat out at the crime scene where you shot Mike Williams in 2001, didn't you? Yes, sir. Mr. Winchester, you're a murderer, isn't it true? Yes, sir. Mr. Winchester, you're a liar, isn't it true? Yes, sir. I have nothing else, Your Honor. Read right. Yes, sir. Talk about the proper agreement just a little bit. Um, as it relates to the proper agreement, you were to give testimony and have to do what happened Mike Williams, correct? Yes, sir. Um, is it not true as part of that proper agreement that if you lied or found to be perjured in any way, shape, or form, that those statements can actually be used against you? It was made explicitly clear to me, particularly by the five attorneys that I had helping me uh, on my case that if I decided to go forth and give a proffer and give information about the Mike Williams case that I absolutely positively needed to tell the truth because if there was any element that was not true of what I came forward and said then whatever I said could be used against me and the agreement would be null and void yes sir and as you mentioned earlier, one of the conditions, the only condition really was, well, the two conditions is you get immunity, but also that we, the state would not be asking for life. And, and there would be no uh, information brought up about Wade Wilson, yes, sir. The uh, state asked for 45 years? Yes, sir. Despite that? Yes, sir. Um, you actually got 20 years in Department of Corrections? Yes, sir. 10 years of which is the mandatory minimum, correct, day for day? Yes, sir. And that's not all, is it? No, sir. What else is part of that? Uh, Fifteen years of GPS monitor probation. So even if you are able to get out of prison, you've got 15 years probation on the back side of that as well, correct? I think until I'm 80. <clears throat> Go back a little bit. Um, you said you separated from Kathy Wynn? Um, he said in 2001, um, that sounds about right. September 2001? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
recognize those items? Yes, sir. What are those items here? Um, tickets to concerts that Denise and I went to. Um, Your Honor, at this time I will move things exhibit number 18, A through F and F. Is there a picture? No, there isn't, Your Honor. It will be admitted. The first ticket there, actually, what's the date of that very first one? The one that was on top is uh, 10 Now, that's prior to my death. Um, yes, sir. Is that a concert that you went to with Denise? Yes, sir. Mr. Wade said something about you being obsessed with Denise. Um, is it also true that you keep memorabilia if you will? Yes, sir. And are those tickets memorabilia? Yes, sir. Mementos of things that you did with Denise? Yes, sir. First one is 1999. What's the date of the second one? Uh, it would be B for the record. I, I, I laid them all out here, but um, in chronological order, I believe. There's one that says uh, July 2001. What's the next one? December 2001. The next one? Um, well, there's two. Uh, April 2002. And? Uh, September 2002. And when is it that you and Denise went public with your relations? Went public with our relationship? So when y'all started going? You see the public? It was um, after all of these. So all those are whenever the relationship is still secret that you kept as a man? Yes, sir. Next uh, subject I'm going to go to, I believe uh, we need to discuss um, a legal issue for God. Right. We're about ready to put right. We'll uh, let the jury step out. We'll take 15 minutes. <coughs> we need the witness on the stand. <coughs> I, I don't believe so. I don't believe so, no, Your Honor. Anybody had ever been a witness to any of the relations between Mr. Winchester and Mrs. Uh, Williams um, during the time frame in question? Um, exhibit number 18 in a series of photographs that were taken. Uh, 18 were the concert tickets. I'm sorry, 17. Um, hold on, I'm sure. 17, and you've already marked yeah, it. 17. It's a composite 17 and 18. Yeah. On your list you gave me, you have 17 as the tanning. Yes, sir, I probably would have made that. Sorry. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there are a series of photographs that were taken prior to Mike's disappearance in Panama City. Um, photographs were taken by Brian Winchester that had picked um, Kathy and Denise, um, some of which are in compromising situations. Um, and I believe that goes to show that there was, in fact, a witness, and in fact, the photographs themselves were stated by Mr. Uh, Winchester, a witness. So, what time frame is, is he going to indicate these are from? Prior to um, Mr. Williams' death uh, in the year. And, and so, what what do you think this shows? This shows that Miss. This... Ms. Thomas was, in fact, a witness um, to the relations that were going on. It was actually a three-way situation between all of them. There were extramarital situations going on with Mr. Winchester, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Williams, and Mrs. Uh, Winchester time now, Ms. Thomas, um, and the fact that they were, in fact, going on a trip over there, um, and there was someone witnessing it. And the photographs themselves are witnesses and memorialize those relations. Uh, 
defendant. Uh, Your Honor, one, the, I, I would object on the basis of foundation of witnesses asked. He, he named names of people who saw him. He did not name uh, his wife, Captain Thomas. Additionally, Your Honor, um, the probative value of those photographs out, is outweighed by the prejudice. Um, the question is asked, are there other witnesses who would know about the relationship? Um, Mr. Winchester can testify to that. Ms. Thomas, who was under subpoena by both the state and the defense, who can testify to that. Introducing multiple photographs of two women in what may be described as compromising position or honor is highly prejudicial. It does not further the testimony that Kathy Thomas may have been at a hotel in Panama City with Denise Williams in 2000. Uh, they would simply be offered to inflame the jury uh, and to appeal to a more current interest. Yes, sir. Said anything so extreme about these, Mr. Way. I, I was kind of expecting to see something much worse. I look at these pictures, what I don't quite understand how you think this is so extremely prejudicial. I mean, that, that, that may be a matter of taste and interpretation, Your Honor. Um, but if they're not, if the prejudice is not outweighed the probative value, I would respectfully argue that it's cumulative. I don't think we need to introduce more than one photograph to establish the fact that sought to be proved. Okay. Um, as to the uh, foundation for their admission, I've not heard that yet, so I'll make no ruling on that. I assume Mr. Winchester can lay a foundation as to the 403 objection. I overruled that objection. There's nothing extremely lurid about uh, the photographs uh, and it was part of the cross-examination to suggest that there was that Mr. Winchester's story was untruthful because other persons had not seen him together with Ms. Williams over a period of time uh, that was a suggestion of the cross-examination assuming that Mr. Winchester puts this in a time frame related to that, it seems to me to be relevant. So I'll overrule the objection. We'll take 10 minutes. I'm sorry. Are you also overruling the objection to the cumulative nature in terms of the number? Yes. John, may I vote for the photograph? It will be in 